Some of the more complicated questions you'll encounter that involve amino acids and proteins on the MCAT involve ways of separating them based on their physical and electrostatic qualities. This is about separating them and it ties in the physics with the biomolecular structure. The first thing to understand is the PI or the isoelectric point. That's the pH where the majority of your proteins or amino acids are in their zwitter ion form. So they have no net charge. They have a positively charged amino group and a negatively charged carboxyl group. And so the PI is where you have the most zwitter ions. Usually this is between 4.5 and 4.7 pH. As you move up the pH level into a more basic environment, the amino group tends to give up its proton and the amino acid becomes an anion. Remembering that the pH in your average cell is in the seven range, that means that most amino acids and proteins in your cells are negatively charged. This can be used to our advantage in order to analyze the different amino acids and figure out important things about them. The first method that you can do is isoelectric focusing. That's where you set up a gel with a pH gradient. So it might have a low pH here and a higher pH on this side. Then you set up the proteins here and run them through with a negative charge on this part and a positive charge on the other side. They will move through until they reach their isoelectric point, their PI. And at that point, they will go from being an anion into a neutrally charged compound and they will stop there. And so you can compare this track, for example, which started out with some amino acids or proteins, and you can compare it to a reference level in order to figure out what kinds of amino acids or proteins are present. So isoelectric focusing, you set up a negative charge on this side, a positive charge here, and you run it through this electric field until it reaches the pH where it becomes a zwitter ion and stops being attracted to this side and repelled from the negative side. Agarose gel electrophoresis is similar, except that it doesn't use a pH gradient. There's not a gradient of pH within this medium. And so what it's doing is it's testing the size. How quickly does it move through this gel? And the ones that move more quickly are of a smaller size, and so they're more readily able to move toward that positive charge that any negatively charged protein or amino acid would be attracted to. The third type of separation method that you'll need to know is SDS polyacrylamide, and that separates it by mass instead. You don't need to know many of the specifics, but just know that this separation is occurring by mass. And so if you see isoelectric focusing, that's being separated by the PI, the isoelectric point, and it's taking advantage of the fact that you have a negative charge up here, a positive charge down here, and the negative charged proteins will thus move through this gel until it reaches its zwitter ion state where it stops being attracted in either direction. Agarose gel electrophoresis, it's purely based on the size because they don't set up a pH gradient there. And the SDS polyacrylamide, just know that that separates it by mass. And if you understand these three distinctions, then you'll be able to answer any protein and amino acid separation question that you encounter on the MCAT.